Welcome, Lauren, and welcome, viewers. It's such a pleasure to be back. I'm so excited to connect with you, Lauren, today. Uh, we've, we've been together traveling around the world, different things, but kind of in the same mission in many ways. And, you know, I feel that we've passed each other, but we haven't had a chance to really connect. So when I was sitting there and thinking, okay, I miss, I miss everybody dearly. And I want to, you know, I want to connect and I want to get to know better what people are doing. You definitely jumped on top of my list because I felt like, you know, I need to know Lauren better. And then I thought the world also needs to know Lauren better. Because as I started looking more into depth of what you're doing, it is such an impressive journey. And, you know, it's interesting because I love how you have this balance of, uh, almost a political kind of a political drive, I think, or, you know, and then also a creative and production. And, yes. you know, you, you have this like reasoning, reasonable mind with like creativity and, and, and staging and beauty and, and vision of good. And I really appreciate that. So welcome, Lauren. It's such a pleasure to see you here. I can't imagine how busy your world right now is. And so first thing that I want to start the day today is with your new endeavor. I mean, you I feel like everything you've been doing seems like it's a, this is a natural progression of where it needs to be. And most importantly, what you're doing is important. It's important not just for our country, but it's important for the world as well, because I think it's just such a great way to lead. And what a great name to call your pack. And it is the League for an Independent America. I mean, and again, I think it's important for the world because people are assuming that America is not like people in other countries think bad about America, but you know, they look up to us. They look up to us for the model of freedom, of democracy, and opportunities. And so what is for America is for the world. I truly believe in that. So anyhow, welcome. Let's just dive right into it. How, what, and why? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, I first off want to thank you so much for having me on your show. I was really excited to hear that you had started this. Uh, and when you reached out to me, I was, I was like, absolutely. I'm actually, um, I'm actually on a campaign trail. So every minute is changing and every second is triple booked, but you know what? That's, uh, that's kind of how we are used to living, right? So I guess it's not that different from the norm. Um, but yes, the, the newest endeavor that I have is called the League for an Independent America. Uh, we are a super PAC. Uh, we actually just registered with the Federal Elections Commission about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. Um, and it seems like something that is very late stage in the election to start. And uh, on one hand, that's true, but we know that the biggest difference we can make is during this last five weeks before the election. And on the other hand, that's not true because we are building something that is meant for longevity. So what we're doing is we're, uh, we're going out and we are trying to get in touch with the 42.3% of American voters eligible American voters that choose not to vote. So when you hear the word independent, right? So we've got the Republican party, the Democratic party, and then you've got, I think it's just over a thousand other registered parties in the United States that follow after that. Um, there are many parties that use the word independence or independent in their name. Uh, we are, we're in support of all of them. We're in support of libertarians. We are in support of the Green Party. We are in support of anybody who wants to expand upon the bipartisan system. So this is meant to be an inclusive endeavor. This is meant to include Democrats and Republicans as well, right? What we are trying to do is get back to the Declaration of Independence. You know, this is, uh, which is actually also a, a controversial topic as well, which we can get into a little bit later if you want. But the US, the United States of America, we've got this thing that we think of called the American dream. And I think you're right when you say that people do look to the US. Uh, there, there's, there's hope, there's ambition, um, there's a bit of grit, I think, that comes with being an American. 
And those are the things that make me proud to be an American. Now I've spent uh, almost half of my life living overseas. I'm, uh, I'm a typical American mutt when it comes to my ancestry, but I'm mainly Czech and French. And um, I, I'm fully aware of the, <laughs> the international views on our country's politics. And I would have to say that I agree with them. I don't think that we are uh, operating under a progressive or within a progressive system right now. But I do think that there are a lot of ideals that Americans have that, uh, that are honorable and inspiring and, and they make us who we are. So, you know, as someone who has thought of themselves as an expatriate for a solid portion of their life, uh, it's interesting that I've now chosen to start a, a super PAC, you know, to help reform American politics. But I think if we can, we can take those American ideals that make us who we are, that are respectable and honorable and inspiring and combine that with a better political system and better political candidates, <laughs> then we, uh, we will be going somewhere much better than where we're at. I agree so 100%. Um, you know, I feel, I feel that you guys are giving the voice to independent America. And I really appreciate that you're going and connecting people because it, like you said, it seems that there's just this polarity, right? It's either, it's either or. And when you start talking to people, um, you know, because those are the only two options, they often say, well, I think I fall here, but I kind of agree with these things and they, there's no other optionality. And also, you know, the, the upgrading of outdated systems, it, at some point system work and they have worked very well. Up until now, we're seeing the things that make it not work. And so I think that one of the important ways of freedom is that ability to exercise that maybe which is outside of the comfort zone right. to ensure that now, you know, the systems are upgraded. And I do believe that we're going through this global dynamic of... Absolutely major systems upgrade and might that be in political ways or um, in the space industry right it could be something that has to do with the medical and education I mean look around it's amazing yeah. company. and I think that you know what's what's wonderful and I'm sure that you can relate to it is that we finally in a position to where we when that which does not serve us mm -hmm. when that that does not work anymore it does not require us to have a revolution i think we now have live in a world where information and this dependence on connectivity makes it to where we are moving forward an evolution and i think that it's really wonderful too it seems to me that it's a natural place that we're arriving to where we don't need to argue right and fight for options we can see other options as well and it is the information that connects us and how wonderful it is that you know so i know that and we'll pivot and then we'll come back to this again uh, what Great. you guys are doing amazing you know the work that you've done with united nations and consulting you've done and i know that things have slowed down a lot but think about it it's still moving forward and we are we are it is so much together to the table. So could you expand a little bit on that, on what is happening with the UN and the program and are there, are there systematic changes there as well? Yes, uh, there absolutely are. So I've done a lot of work kind of on and off with the UN for um, most of my life after university. So I guess it's probably the last 11 years. Um, when I, when I first, so I, I went to university in, in France, actually, um, and then I stayed there and I worked with UNESCO for a little while. Um, and that was very different, I would say, than what I do with the UN now. But uh, that was very that that was that was a program that I aided that brought, um, you know, people in music and the arts together. As a sort of um, almost a sort of incubator space to tackle issues that the people were facing around the world. So we would put together some sort of concert that would include, um, you know, maybe like 
um, a Russian uh, ballerina with somebody from you know China coming in and composing and then maybe you know somebody from the US to come in and create the visual arts or like you know these are just examples but you would basically have to come in and you would be representing your country at an international concert we actually did the the opening ceremony um for the Guangzhou Asian Olympics um and we've done on, you know things all at, at UN spaces all over the world but then you would be there to kind of tackle an issue like you know the the education crisis in Egypt after the revolution was one of the things that that we were focusing on so you've got all these different people all these different world leaders that can contribute something coming in and you start everything off with them having to have already collaborated on an artistic level with people from other countries in order to create solutions after that and have a forum and an agenda after that for something that's uh, you know either more political or, or sociological. Um, so that was that was actually very educational for me because for me music is uh, kind of something that it's it's a language and um, that's. You know, that's, I, I think it's a language for everyone, but for me that kind of, it's, it's a language that can just, it can bring me to tears in an instant, right? Like I, I just, there's something innate in me, there's something in my DNA that's just naturally drawn to that. So to be able to use uh, music in a sort of quantifiable way to help solve issues was one of the coolest things I had ever done. Um, that gave way into a more recent program that I'm working on with the International Council for Caring Communities. And what we, there, there's many things that the council does, but my, my most, uh, the thing I'm most excited about that we're working on is a program for entrepreneurs that are under-resourced around the world. So we bring in uh, different organizations, whether that's, you know, Microsoft or, um, you know, so, some sort of, um, incubator or fund that wants to come in and say, hey, we work with entrepreneurs in different countries around the world that don't have financial resources or uh, the human resources, the connections, the ability to leave their village, wherever that is, um, but have created something amazing. So that could be a tech platform, that could be an invention, whatever it is, and we help put them in touch with the people to help their business thrive. So we get them government contracts, uh, we put them in the room with people. It, it's good for both sides, right? So you'll, we'll have, we do two events a year at Windsor Castle, and then we do two events a year at the United Nations in New York. This year, unfortunately, that had to kind of slow a bit. Um, so we're having some digital event fill-ins. But, uh, you know, you, my favorite thing about it is you can have a world leader sitting there saying, I don't know what to do about this problem that my country has. And you've got an entrepreneur who's, again, under-resourced, whatever it is, has, has not seen what they've seen in the world and vice versa. He says, well, I've already, I've already uh, created yeah, something. I know how to build it, come on. <laughs> come on no and then it's, it's just great for everybody. It's one of my favorite things. It's one of the coolest things about, uh, about okay. connecting. So, so that's the, the program that we have. And the right program now. is still going on. They're just doing it virtual, basically. Yeah, so we're actually going to rebrand the program a little bit and do uh, we're going to relaunch next year because with COVID it's just it's been really difficult so we've been doing digital things, but uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna bring it back and hopefully have things in, in person which are, are really important next year, but that will still be between Windsor Castle and, and the UN yes. Yeah. How amazing what we are going through now. I think that we are becoming so more acceptable of connecting with each other virtually. You know, it's so pleasure to see you. Like, I feel like, you know, soon in VR, we can do it. I know, I know, we need, I know. And imagine how much more meaningful our in-person person gatherings and these events will be. I went to North American Space uh, Summit maybe three weeks ago it was the first you know first event I went to and it is amazing the level of commitment people have to traveling the dedication you know and I think that looking looking forward to a future I think we'll have wonderful events next year and I think there'll be more of a high quality because people will truly dedicate their time yeah you know? 
to that, which brings me back to time. And exactly. you know, I think the time and timing and people, um, I'm a huge supporter of Brock um, and your you know, guys are, you know, supporting him and supporting yeah. Yes, he's he's empowering the independent the independence. I love his message. I I love Brock personally as a person. I know him well. I've seen him in a, in number of different places all over the world and spend time with him. And he has a beautiful human inside him. And he does say those those things that he says. He means them. They're in his heart. He's been saying this for years. If you know Brock, you know. You exactly. know. And that's, it's just this thing that he cares about it. And it takes a brave heart to go in and be open and say, you know, I'm going to go for it. America needs to hear it. I know the world needs it. And, you know, I don't care that maybe it's late or I didn't start early because now is the time and the time is now. And so I would love for you to talk a little bit more about that, about kind of, you know, how now it's important. And then also looking forward to the commitment to the future as well. You know, how does the, how does the timeline play into, you know, the future and the vision of the future? So um, as a pack, we are publicly endorsing Brock as our number one choice for candidate uh, for the presidency of the United States. And it's funny because, you know, when you first tell somebody what, what you're doing, sometimes they just look at you and they're like, I, do you think it's a bit early? Or do you think uh, that maybe you know, like, have you really thought this, this through? And I always just find that to be such a strange response because there's not, I, I don't really know another person that's as prolific as Brock is. And he really does dig into the issues and the things that he stands for. First off, Brock is a natural born leader. He knows how to lead um, both in a philosophical way and in a practical way, which is very important. He understands why he is running for president. He understands the change that he can make. And then he also has the practical knowledge to do that. There's not very many people out there that can run a country. Brock is very young. He's 39 years old. And he's already somebody that I see could potentially run a country. When you start a political career, you have to start. So everyone keeps saying, well, do you, do you think that your, do you think that your candidate is uh, gonna make it into the White House this year? And I'm like, we're- If anybody can do it, Brock can do it, okay? Because also yeah. the time is we now- a, We have a very specific strategy and that strategy involves an independent candidate winning a few electors or winning one to three states, which by the way, has never happened with an independent candidate before. Ross Perot won 19% as an independent candidate. He won 19%, that's huge, of the popular vote. He didn't win one state because he didn't have a state's strategy. And I've actually spoken to people on his team that say, no, we didn't have a state strategy and it was a mistake that we made. Um, Trump got into office because he had a state strategy. That's how our system works. That's how the electoral college works. You have a number of electoral votes that go to each state. It's not equal by state. So every single state casts their electoral votes that then goes in to the federal vote. And we will be running again in 2024. We will also be running over 100 independent candidates in 2022 for the House and the Senate so that we have more representation. This is the beginning of a long political career. And uh, we're, we're endorsing Brock because we, we think that this is, this is something that can actually happen. That's our platform. I really appreciate too um, that he says that it's not about me. You know, right. he's really giving voice to the independent America, and America is independent, and there are many voices that America has that it was just you know need needs to be heard, right? Uh, yeah, I, I want to comment on that. Actually, I, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but from memory, I want to say that. Um, I, I might flip flop these two. So uh, apologies if my, my data is not correct from memory, but I, I believe it's um, like 27 or 25% roughly of the country identifies as 
Democrat, 30% identifies as Republican, and 40% of the country identify as independent. That is, that's not just the majority by a small amount, that is huge. We also have 42% of people that don't vote in our country. And people actually believe that voting outside of the two party system is a wasted vote. It's, yeah. it's, it's all media, it's all media. Well, I think also think about, I think about this. Um, you know, right now there's huge tension between the two opposites. So there's very, very high tension, almost an aggression type of yeah. energy and messaging that's happening. And uh, very scary words like civil war have been, right. look, I'm not political. I don't listen to news, but even through my, I concentrate on the integration of innovations, right? World of technology and financial inclusion and capital markets. I'm a, I, I, I live there. Right, I don't wish to, I, I, but I know those things because no matter what you see that. And how interesting that now what you're saying is that emergence of the independence. I feel that maybe this independent kind of a voice that we need to be able to escape this tension that right. created by polarity, right? And we are the tension and I think that you know, the more I think is, the more we move forward to the election day, the more I think, you know, it really is a way for us to make it to where it would lead the freedom. People all over the world would say like, oh, America has an independent voice. And it's not all about all this pre-designed parties. Mm -hmm. I fall independent. I am, you know, I'm, if there's not, neither one of the political parties uh, present kind of solutions that I, I see. To me, it's just kind of like, a, which one of the two, only two ways and nothing else does not work, you know? Uh, I, and so I think that my point here to say is that I think you guys are also have an important voice that America does need. And I think that voice is the peace, is that unity. And to me, that's what you guys bring. You know, I follow, I follow Brock on Twitter. I, I, He's one of the people that comes into um, into my world because he actually mentions and says things that matter. Like right. uh, I feel like okay, uh, you know, uh, and and I see people picker and say like, what about this? And it's like, well, hold on, these messages are important. I we don't see any political uh, representatives going and saying this messaging, and that represents what people are feeling and thinking and what they want in their realities. So I, I think that you guys bring peace and you know, and you bring the innovation. The fact to me, it seems that, okay, those that trade with each other do not fight with each other. And you know, how great it is to would have been have a leader who has understanding of a global economics, who has done global businesses, who understands how to do business and to implement innovation and adopt technology, exactly. and, you know, and who's been to, who's been advising on innovation of blockchain, which is a single source of truth to many, many governments and, and companies and leading lending that, right? Single source of truth is not a joke. And Brock has been the leading force behind it. And I think it just goes to that voice of wanting to let things speak for itself, you know? And I think that's what you guys are doing. And so I see you guys have short-term strategy and- Short and long, yes. Long. So uh, it was the short, explain this to me again, because I listened to Brock say that a couple of times, but basically when, when, the, when the three parties, mm -hmm. uh, if neither one of polarities wins a vote, then there is something that happens. Like where, yeah. where is that detail why, you know, you guys, yes. you guys are not an underdog? <laughs> It's amazing because it's it's in in true form with I think a lot of the other um, you know the other it's Brock who's someone who's been so present in the gaming community right um, and and uh, I don't want to say seize life like a game but sees how there are games within life our political system is one of those games so 
one of the funny things is uh, the way that the system is structured right now is that you don't actually have to win the vote in order to become president. So right now, in order to become president, you have to reach at least 270 electoral votes. Now, the only, the only candidates that ever win states are either Democrat or Republican. They've got the most funding behind them usually. They've got, um, you know, it's, it's, they're the most easily recognizable parties. States are either Democrat or Republican. And normally their electoral votes go towards those parties in the federal vote. However, if there were somebody to win a state or two states or three states, it would suddenly be possible that nobody receives 270 electoral votes, in which case, no joke, nobody wins the presidency. This actually happened in 1824 with John Quincy Adams and Aaron Burr. Um, well, that's when John Quincy Adams became the president. Uh, so, so essentially, if nobody wins 270 electoral votes, there is no president. The vote then goes to the House. There are 30 days for them to elect a president. And normally, whichever candidate gets 26 out of the 50 votes of the House is who becomes president. In previous cases, that has always been the candidate who has third place and not the candidate that has first or second place. Right, okay, it all came back. Precedence, yeah. Um, now, is that likely to happen? We don't know, but that can happen. It has happened before. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not foreign to um, sort of- uh, Playing game. <laughs> yes, right. infinite possibilities, shall we say. Um, but yes, this is, again, as I said, this is the beginning of a long political career for Brock. And we, uh, I, I think it was, it was probably one of the boldest things he could have done to start out running for president. And oh, it's, it's, really, it's really, it's really cool. We were in just under 20 ballots around the United States after announcing on July 4th. Well, 20, that means that on 20 ballots of 20 states, basically 20 states, right? I mean, yeah. politics are not very, I'm, I'm not very close to politics, so. Well, it's a weird world. I, I completely understand. But I, I will say, and for somebody to get on uh, just under 20 ballots in a matter of basically weeks, yeah. when uh, most people wouldn't even know how to get on one ballot, I don't know if you know what it takes to get on a ballot in a state, but it is, uh, especially during COVID, yeah. it is an oh, insane amount of signatures and door knocking and having to get around yeah. all of, while doing that legal, you know, in a, in a way that's legally compliant is it's. So there is a study, um, study that I was talking to Justin, my husband, about that. Um, and basically, you know, it, it's been going on for a long time. I don't know the name of it, whatever, it doesn't matter. But basically, we now understand that what it takes for somebody, so usually there's the great leaders usually are not great runners, right? That means that they, they do right. great with the, with the roadshow or what we call right. it markets right so so they're they don't you know they don't do well with that and and so and then vice versa those that run very well usually lack that ability of the leadership and right. it usually requires two personalities but interestingly you see brock has both what i love about him is that he, he does he have, is having both yeah and yeah. I, I you know i sure hope that to me, moving forward to future, one of the timelines I would like to see, right, would be, let's say that Brock does that, he empowers the independent voice, and then there's a system internally as well to be able to give the voice to that, to, to those leaders that 
are never going to go for running, never, because they cannot participate within that system mm -hmm. and allow evolution of these of this different thought leaders, right, of different leaders that are born to lead the country through innovations, through kind of all the upcoming realities of fast growth and fast adoption and changing things in so many different ways. Those We have many leaders like that in, in our country and our children up and coming. And I think that that's such a wonderful way to think about to where, you know, there are definitely odds and it is worth it. And in the end of the day, it's a great way to have that flag of independence, right? And say, okay, we we do have the voice and yeah. you know, and so and so we shall because we do. Um, so anyhow, um so you I want to talk to you a little bit about the production because you did the sure. ACL and stuff, and so there then that's that other aspect of you of the creative and the music and expression tell me more about what you were doing like why you know why it's it seems amazing because they, everyone loves ACL well so what's funny about I would say my sort of life and and career and uh you know just what what I've chosen to spend my my time and my energy on growing up I actually always wanted to be in politics. Um, and I, I kind of, I actually grew up very surrounded by musicians um, and in recording studios, but I always wanted to be in politics. And because I thought, well, that's how you change the world, you get into politics. And uh, then I was kind of like, as I learned a little bit more as I got older, I realized that, um, oh, I, I can't, I'm not, I can't do that. That's, uh, that's, that's actually the opposite of what I wanted to do. Um, so the reality of, of politics is not for me. And so I, uh, yeah, I, I went into the music industry, which was, was a better choice for sure for me at the time. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure there's really much else in the world that I would have given my, my blood, sweat and tears to be in. Um, but you know, it's, it, it was something that I had grown up around a lot. I actually grew up around a lot of, uh, metal musicians, which is really funny. I, I'd be like 12 years old wearing, um, like a school uniform. And my dad had taken me to some recording studio. Of course, my mom was like, where's my daughter? <laughs> and we're just like, and I was like, no, 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 it's cool. I want to hang out with the musicians. And I'd, so I'd be like 12, I'd wake up on a couch and there'd be like someone screaming over me while I'm still wearing my school uniform saying like, hey, you look like a kid. You can see, get in the booth. I need a kid's voice on my album. And I would just be like, what? Like, I don't, I don't sing. He's like, doesn't matter, get in the booth. And like, so just, you know, little things like that. So music has always been like that environment of a creative space has just always been um, really fun for me. It probably contributes a lot to my, my current, you know, uh, just who I am and, and, and oh person. absolutely 100 percent yeah yeah but um so I I started I went to France worked with the UN there and then I came back and started working with Austin City Limits um Willie Nelson and his nephew were actually my first business partners and uh you know we we created a lot of amazing things together we opened up the sort of media branch of Austin City Limits uh studio uh, which, which had kind of a pseudonym of stage side productions. And uh, we were recording, this is at a really young age, by the way, it was kind of like, how did I end up doing this? Um, but we would record, you know, for all of the major tele television outlets, all of their music content and, and put that out. So there was basically, you have the festival, the Austin C City Limits television show, and then our branch, which was kind of using all the resources between the two and, and creating content for, for all over the world. Um, so then I, I moved to New York uh, a couple years later and actually did something very similar, um, you know, working with, with major artists, have worked with everyone from Willie, like I said, to Jay-Z, um, to Nas, who um, I'm, I'm actually uh, reaching out with, I'm going to get him involved on the, on the campaign and with the super PAC. So <laughs> he's, uh, he's really big into crypto, by the way. And they're big fans of Brock, so I'm trying to get a hold of Nas to be like, "Hey, man, come, come, be a part of this." Um, but what was funny is about, I would say about three years ago now, uh, I just kind of looked around and I had a lot of people I was working with that I really loved, 
but I just didn't see the kind of innovation in the industry that uh, I needed in order to stay. And I felt like, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's the, the music industry really operates out of fear, I think. And uh, it makes sense because they've got this shrinking pie yeah. and everyone's wondering where their, you know, their next, uh, their next dollar is coming from. So they're always trying to take it from other people instead of come up with innovative solutions. Um, it's not everyone, of course, but a solid portion of the industry. I, it, that's how I, how I see but that's it. How systems, all, all systems are. It's just They're how it's systems. designed, right? Any, any industry, any world you look at, it's kind of one of those, like, I'll take away, you know, I'll hold on to my bone and keep it from everybody. And it's all fear. And for yeah. the most part, for, for the most part, it is challenging for all kinds of uh, industries for, for just, I think, how our systems are built. Mm -hmm. And that's just all around us. So I'm, What's beautiful is that we have technologies now and yeah. so many technologies to be able to do the things that we all want to do. You know, the beauty, the beauty of our world, I think right now is that we're going through a very new process for humanity. And that is this gradual and fast, it, fast evolution and not revolution. So kind of an upgrade. I think that that's, you know, that's kind of, to me it's happening and it's happening before because of uh, technology. You know, I we went, so at the space, um, the space conference. Yeah. The cam commander of the space air force, space force, space force um, was, you know, was addressing, um, he couldn't come on his own, you know, because he was busy, but he, you know, he talked to, he did the Zoom presentation, kind of a talk and an inspiration, if you would. And so the message he had is that, you know, it's time for us to change our systems and it's time for us to start thinking and adapting to the world of innovations because the old age of industrial kind of a living is not there anymore. The industrial age is over and we're moving in a fast pace of innovations. And so his call of action was, to, and I mean, this is like US Space Force commander, right? And right. he's Air Force commander. So really kind of a big, big message. And that is, you know, work with innovations, make fast decisions, think for long-term solutions and realize that reality is such that um, everything is moving faster um, than, you know, it is acceptable within a traditional systems and that goes to everything. I think that's why you guys, you know, what you're bringing is so important because as I've been watching, as I've been watching, you know, kind of where you go and what you guys are doing and, um, I, I really appreciate the people that get behind it because that message is the key. And you do yeah. through building and connecting the all the voices of independent um, kind of of independence in all all different states brings America together. You know, because you're going through and you're kind of saying, okay, I know you've been separate, <laughs> but we're united. We're here. We're, we're united. Here. That is, we that is true. United. We are. People are so scared right now and there's nothing to be scared about. Just we need to let go of fear and understand that we all are united. It's for our benefit to keep growing. We're doing a good job. And I think that, you know, when we look at the global situation in the world, America is doing very well comparing to other countries. And I think that we are on the right path. And that's all we just you know we just need to be not scared and get our heads out of fear and you know start adapting very fast <laughs> absolutely and the the number one thing uh that i can say would make the difference is obviously educating yourself if you're if you're not paying attention to the political sphere i understand like there's so much going on 90 percent of the media is incorrect anyway and uh you know that's that's unfortunate, but we're 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 also trying to change that. I would pay attention to the actual platforms of the people that you're casting a vote for. And actually, as many of my friends choose not to vote in sort of silent protest of the political system, please go vote. Like it's it is worse to not vote. You can go vote for somebody that's not a major candidate. Right, that's, that is the only way to tip the scale. And if you think that by uh, by not, if you think that your vote is wasted by not voting for something that is the majority, 
I mean, that's the opposite of innovation. That's the opposite opposite of change. How do, how does change happen? You have to go. You have to go do it. Responsibility it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, sometimes it does actually. But yeah. you know what I mean? It does, <laughs> it does actually. It does right? Changes actually happen very fast. Yes. Cool. Put your energy where you want your energy to be seen, and then talk to the people around you to do the same thing. Whatever that decision is, go stand for it. It's Otherwise, nothing changes. Yeah, I have a question. So you said that you guys have 20, um, 20 ballots. Yes, uh, Brock is just under 20 ballots. I have to look at the exact number. I believe it's 19. Um, if he's not on the ballot, do people, you have to be on the ballot to be able to be voted in? Or can no. I write with my hand the name and middle name and last name? You can absolutely write in a candidate. Uh, it, wherever you are. Of course, it's ideal to be on the ballot. Um, but as I said, it's it's pretty impressive that somebody was able to get on almost half of the ballots in the United States yeah. in a matter of weeks. It's pretty yeah. I know. So, I know Brock was very close in Texas. And, and mm -hmm. people showed up, for, you know, yeah. So I'm excited. That's awesome. So you don't have to be on ballot. You can just write. No, a you, can, you can vote for anybody you want for, for. Can I vote for you? Like, can I go and write in your name or you have to go and register? No, you, well, you, you can write in any name that you want, but um, you do need to be registered with the Federal Elections Commission. I believe for that to to register. I, I don't, I don't want to advise. I actually don't know the answer to that. So I, I don't want to advise if I don't. But um, I, you, you can absolutely vote for Brock by writing his name in. Yes. And so what does your life now looks like for next, I don't know, 10, five years, five yeah. years, traveling nonstop. And let's talk about you. Like what, you know, what is your current reality and the day looks like? Uh, well, right now I basically, um, I, I don't, know where I'm going to be the next day. And if I think I know, it usually changes, uh, which is which is OK. I actually had just started. I don't know if you knew this. Um, my my friend Brittany Kaiser and I started before all of the election work, um, the third crypto castle with Jeremy Gardner in Los Angeles. And uh, it was a ton of fun, but we kind of all had to, to move on to different projects. So I'm actually currently moving out of L.A. right now. And, uh, and I thought I was going to be moving to New York, but now I don't know if I'll, I, I. Come back to Austin. Look, it doesn't, you'll be traveling anyway. Austin is the best. You know, it's the best. <laughs> it is a fantastic place. I, I do love Austin. I still have access to my place there. So, hey, you know, it's, it's always an option. But uh, the, the Super PAC is headquartered in New York City. So technically, I you will be there. Yeah. I will be there. But uh, right now, I'm, I'm just on the campaign trail. That's is it, is it available for um, international supporters to participate in that? Or is it limited to Americans? Um, so you do have to be a US citizen in order to donate um, or to support. Um, you don't have to be a U.S. citizen to do, um, you know, certain jobs with us. So we you know we just want to make sure that we're we're complying with the FEC uh, every step of the way. But unfortunately, donations, yes, I, I mean it, may, it makes sense, right, for the American political system. Obviously, they're they're only going to take U.S. citizens, um, but we can work on on different levels with with people abroad. And foreign policy is something that's very important to us. So. Um, well, I would feel like uh, organizations like UN maybe is a, a good yeah. voice, right? I, <laughs> ideally, it seems to me that when when you have kind of a what do you call it the mission or you know what you are doing and the global global people from all over the world come yeah. and support that it. It seems that we should be in a point to where it's not a person but values. So and you know, yeah, absolutely. Contract we can. Yeah. So I want to talk to you a little bit more about that, about kind of the vision of what does what does the implementation of innovations means for um, for for support kind of um, of 
you know, the independent voice? Like, does the independent yeah. voice actually go and supports the innovations and adoptions? Because let's face it, we both know yeah. that uh, um, regulatory kind of infrastructure is very slow. And I think it's clear that we finally in a point to where we're, we can't implement, Governments cannot implement it. The, the parties do not know how to vote about things. They're just all lost and confused and don't know what is going on. And I think that that creates problems because innovations will be used whether they're mm -hmm. regulated or unregulated. There's no stopping, you know, there's no stopping VR, okay? The dark, and we wouldn't want to. Right, but I'm just, want to stop it. what that means is that, you know, but regulators are not going in and looking at it and government or political candidates are not talking about it but yeah. you know the dark the dark market training in vr is really disturbing okay um and like yes, as, it is people don't talk about that it's a big problem and there's 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 all these dark sides to all innovations always because it just means new ways of doing things and yeah. i think that a proactive way of coming in and saying, how do we make sure that the values are implemented using these innovations for bettering our lives and not hoping to God that, you know, it's all gonna Absolutely. be. Yeah, so I I'd love to know more about that. What, you know, kind of, what is the vision for innovations and maybe what is the plan for blockchain technology if there's any? Yeah. Um, well, there, there's plans for all different types of innovative technologies, but one of the things that's most important for me is having leaders in place that actually understand the tech that they are creating regulation around. Um, if you know me, I'm actually, I'm a fan of regulation, but I'm a fan of the right regulation. Yeah. So when new industries or new sub industries pop up, uh, I think it's good and it's important, it's, it's required to kind of let them play for a little bit, right? You have to see- Yeah, sandbox them, yeah. Yeah, of course. and we're kind of at the point where unfortunately a lot of the people now creating regulation for things like blockchain, things like AI um, are not, they're not educated on what these industries even have the capability of doing, much less how they work on a foundational level. Um, and I think that's really, it's dangerous. It's unfortunate for the people that are uh, entrepreneurs in those spaces and it's dangerous because they might making the right, they might be making the the right things illegal. I mean, the, sorry, the right things illegal or or, or not uh, legal, and, and vice versa. And it's just, it's a very dangerous thing when you don't have someone that's knowledgeable about the tech making regulations about that tech. Um, one of the other things that I was working on before I started doing the super PAC and we'll start up again after the election is a documentary on the future of artificial intelligence. Uh, so I'm doing that with my friend, Brittany, friend and business partner, Brittany, and then uh, with Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas, which I think most people think he's only done work in the music space, but he's, he's got a pretty uh, outstanding career in AI as well. So we'll be going around and interviewing some of the most cutting edge technologies uh, prolific leaders and innovators in AI and getting their thoughts, kind of first educating people and then talking about some of the benefits and dangers of AI and then taking that to Congress and creating a constitution for AI to help future legislation that's being formed. Yeah, absolutely. It's so important to do that on all verticals. I mean, no matter where we look, it's it's there. It, it, to me, it's very hopeful that we finally at the point to where regulators do understand blockchain technology, they do understand the difference between, uh, you know, currency aspect of it and just a, you know, single source of truth. Right. Information. Right. I, I wonder, I wonder, you know, what happens you know, what happens and how does it look to when your voice is your voice and it's accounted to you, right? When the information is just the information, it's not, uh, um, it's, it's immutable. And we, right. we live in a world where information is highly mutable, <laughs> okay? Exactly. And we, the reality is we don't know what the truth is and often we even build our bias the way we see the world 
based on those things that are not truth. And that's very, very normal because we build our bias the way we look at things while we're children, usually programmed by our parents and or our and our outside, right? And as we go through life, information that comes at us, it's you should always question the authenticity exactly. that's coming to you, even if there's a stamp of approval that says that this is a hundred percent approved information, right? And so we leave. By whom? <laughs> Right, right. I mean, history, everything. People uh, that we trust, people that we trust. No. So code and math, okay? In code we trust and math is math, okay? Right. And those are the two, I think, things. And we finally are at the point to where we can actually be treated and leave our world and make our decisions with the fact that we don't have to verify, re-verify. And we finally can just no right there's no need for trust because we just know it and i think that for political reasons it's so important and i really appreciate that brock understands application of this and he he knows what technology works and yeah. most importantly he could pull together the top experts in the technology and, and okay. many of them and actually implement solutions that would lead not just america but the world because i mean there's there's so much there's so much that this simple statement, okay, that we can finally have immutable information that cannot be edited uh, by anybody, um, you know, it, it changes everything in our lives. And it is something that we have never had, never, right? So, yeah, so, uh, it, you know, I think- that if, voting, just gonna say, that's what yeah, we need. Well, I mean, everything. Voting everything settlement of capital markets changed dramatically right 30 about over 33 steps of re re verifying whether whether this is that or it is not something and usually it's a its own entity that answers those questions so you end up having like so many intermediaries that hold on to your money <laughs> and take them crazy so because we need to have this verification we've been living in a world where information is usually a lie and so we're building yeah. systems that prevent us from lying to each other or really catching each other in lie we don't need to we do not need to do that we don't need to political system it seems the same way right that it's like there's all these things that people say about candidates that i don't even know what the truth is and you know what i don't have bandwidth to go in and check whether it's true or not right. like uh, i i i don't know to me i'm working in my own world and i'm not falling into the black hole of who said about whom gossip type of a political campaigning or pickering at each other you yeah. know all the time it's like a it's like bad mom and dad a, a trap where they always freaking argue at each other right and there's no arriving and you just don't know anything and you're like a yeah. child just okay <laughs> will not participate with <laughs> And, uh, you know, and again, um, I, I don't have politics, I don't follow whatever, but that's kind of like my, you know, my voice is that I, I don't have bandwidth to pay attention to it, all the speakering, you know. From, yeah. from well, uh, I understand that. And I, I think that it's a shame that uh, the bickering is, is what's on the forefront. So that's, that is what we are working to move past and actually pay attention to what's yeah. being built and to, to true innovation and, and a progressive future, so. Also, um, I want to talk about Britney as well, because Britney is uh, also a big driving force behind um, the campaign. Um, and so I'd, I'd, I'd love for you to kind of, uh, you know, talk about what do you guys, what, what is being done as far as an implementation of policies and kind of a decision making and everything, because she's an advocate, I, I mean, we've, Brittany uh, did the Cambridge Analytica. She stood up with the vote. It, it took a lot of ball, excuse me, balls, fine, I'll complete it. But, you know, it took a lot of strength to be able to go through with it. And it takes a lot of dedication and it takes voicing. It's not necessarily the most popular thing to do. Now, luckily, it became something that people value. And, you know, she's been having a voice all over the world before COVID. She was you know, traveling nonstop, speaking on biggest stages on issues of privacy and kind of, you know, data, right? 
has a program for children, um, you know, how to deal with that. And so I would love to know more about that because it is a big issue. And how do you see, um, you know, that? Well, um, so just, just uh, in case you're not aware, I actually can't, uh, so as a super PAC, we operate separately from the campaign. Okay. Um, and so when it comes to, to strategy and things like that, I, I don't even know what those things are. And okay. It's not public. Okay. We've got, um, okay. We have a, a firewall built between us. And yeah. so, so that's, you know, we, we actually don't speak about campaign strategy. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not, I wasn't talking about campaign strategy. I was talking about kind of like understand because it gives insight to the candidate to the issues of, of privacy and yeah. like the abuses that are done and practices that were used to gain the system, right? Uh, I think that that's, so I, I wasn't asking from that. I was asking, I guess, from like the public, from, from what is public and, you know, how, how is that, how is that something that is on the kind of on the minds? Because it is one of the biggest questions. People don't know how to come to that, right? How, like what privacy means and, and how we, yeah. Absolutely. Is, uh, is unknown. So that it was more kind of a public uh, question. Sure. Um, well, what I would say is that, um, you know, obviously Brittany is someone I know well and, and I respect her work to the utmost. And uh, in the past, before the campaign, we've done a lot of work together. Um, and, you know, one of the things that has been the most important to her and her foundation. Um, and myself as well, is the ethical use of data. I know that that sounds crazy from people that are coming from the Cambridge Analyt Analytica world, uh, but it's, it's kind of one of those things where when you're in the middle of a brand new industry, you don't really realize how maybe that industry is forming until it gets to a certain point, you know? you don't see the building blocks that are being put in place. But I think, I, I, I would assume that she would say, and I know that I would say as well, very thankful for being around that experience because now in the future, I can see those building blocks that will be put in place that might be building an unethical side of an industry. Um, you know, this is why Brittany has gone and started the Own Your Data Foundation, um, an advisor to the foundation as well. Although obviously we, we had to put that down for the campaign work and for the super PAC work, that's everything is separate now. Um, but that's something that is, is at the forefront of, of everything that I know I'm doing and I assume for what she's doing as well. I mean, she speaks about it every single day, you know, you can use data, but how do you use that in an ethical way? How do you make it so that people can own their data? and actually potentially have a universal earned income off of that data. You know, we went through the, we went through hell before to see that maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel with us and it can actually be used as something good instead of yeah, something bad. For sure. And ethical is, is something that's a question of its own. So it really allows us to think, you know, what does that mean to us now? Um, such a, such a great way to, to live our lives right now, um, we get to we get to definitely live through a lot of strangeness and hope and things that you know anchor us as well. I think that's just the times are. Good. I know they're hard, but a lot of good is being built. And a lot of good, yeah. So good. And it's nice to see too that for as just that there's somebody that's putting in the effort and saying, you know what, I am independent. I have an independent voice. I, I know that America hears me and America, you know, I trust it and I hear it and campaign on it and get the support of all the independent voices. It, it gives hope, you know, that's all. So, so in my, in yeah. my pocket, in my pocket of like, okay, future, when there's a tension, I'm like, well, we have an option, right? Like there's yeah. one and three options now. So that's all, you know, and-, and yeah, that works, absolutely. Yeah, that works great. Okay, so I have a question for you. Okay, I think I've, pro I, uh, I've probably got one question left just because yeah. I do and have- that's the last question. Well, yeah. But I'm, I'm eager to hear. 25 years forward, look around, describe to me what you see. 
what I would like to see or what I think will happen. Yeah, it's, I don't know how you, I don't know how no. you manifest in future tense or in the present tense. I, I'd say that call it in a present tense because, uh, you know, then it's more likely to materialize. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that what I, I dream of seeing is a very tech forward world that has also learned to be closer with nature. So I think a lot of people, you know, when you, you see a movie or something where, where tech is very forward and it kind of looks like the opposite of nature. And I don't think that that has to be the case. We can use, you know, innovative technologies to help us live in a world where climate change or what, regardless of what you think about that is not an issue. You know, maybe we've visited a couple of other planets in 25 years. I, I sure hope we have. Um, you know, finding a way to bring technology to the forefront of what we're doing for good, that's what I see in 25 years. You know, people that, education being open to all because of that. You know, so, so we've got a smarter species, a more aware species. Um, We've got, uh, hopefully healthcare becomes less of an issue because maybe we've figured out how to use AI intelligently uh, in a non-dangerous way to help us predict health issues before we could have even known ourselves or before you know, doctors today can, can be able to tell. So what I see is a very tech forward future that does not negate nature, but is closer to it because of that and uh, has, has given our species superpowers in a way. That's what I'm... That's what I'm hoping for. It's what I'm picture, I love it. And so be it. Yeah. So be it. So be it. Well, um, I wanted to say thank you. And I, I want to catch up and hear more about what you're you're doing as well sometime. Well, um, yes. You, you have a reason to come to Austin always. I do. I will come and see you. There's the Halloween party in Austin. And then there is the other, uh, there's the Ara gathering on the... Perfect. In November, but I'll tell you about that. Okay. Great. Well, Love thank it. you so much. Keep thank up the good work. Thank I you. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. You too. Okay. Bye.